hi guys welcome back to deliver studios we are still on creating the to do tags in android application we all started from uh, the user authentication where the user gets to register and log in into the application and uh, after that you create a to do tax uh, we're able to read all to do tax that a particular user created uh, we this time we're going to uh, try to update that tax because you might have created a tax and you need that updated before the date of uh, executing the tax so we should give the room to do that and we'll be using the uh, the slim PHP uh, web API framework to get uh, the API's uh, set up uh, we've been doing that right from the creation of user uh, the, the login the um, the update of user data uh, the creation of tax and uh, the tax uh, to do tax, and now we'll be looking at the update of the created to do tax. So I'll be adding straight to Sublime Text where I have uh, the PHP uh, uh, file, and uh, we have that right there on your screen. And uh, we'll be walking you through on how to achieve that. So, right there, you need a function right there in the index.php uh, which will point at the localhost users version 1 tax update because you're trying to update the tax and you need to pass in the ID of that tax which is the unique identifier to the particular tax created and this uh, is actually gonna work quite smoothly so you should have logged in into the application uh, and uh, you should have fetched your the particular tax related to you to the user so before you could start to update or probably delete later on now let's get to look at how we're going to set up we have the put uh, because now you're updating we need to use the verb put and uh, the text update with an ID that the identifier needed now we're going to uh, pass that identifier into a closure a function uh, which will be used in this just like uh, passing part of the parameters that you pass in or you're getting from the URL uh, you're trying to use part of that probably you need to use the ID or you need to use the username uh, print which was sent from the URL so that's just it we are having a closure of an ID which we'll be using in the DB operations so now we're moving ahead I uh, use the app and the response is an array an array response after that you have the tie to these are the body uh, you need to uh, update some records uh, basically you could update a particular record but now you need you might need to update the title uh, alongside you need to update the dates of the tax uh, the time and the tax description itself so you should give room for that so we're giving room for all our fields in the application we have the title tax date time and the tax you're posting that and you're getting those values to the variables created over here on the left now you instantiate the db operation and uh, you pass in those parameters into the method update record we'll get to look at the method after this after that you get a response and you have the array of the response so you we have a response that we're expecting if the result is uh, false or true if it's false uh, that means the record is updated and if the error response is true that could not update the record so that's the echo response that we'll be having a uh, 200 successful is okay so that's that for the uh, for the route and let's get to look at the DB operations where we'll be looking at the update function update record you could see that here this can be a method can be a function that takes in five parameters tie to tax date time the tax description itself and the ID which is the closure that you expecting which is an identifier to that particular tax so what you're going to do you're going to prepare the SQL statement update tax you set the title to the you know the needed title which is the variable title you set the date also the time the tax where the ID is what you're passing in now which is this particular ID where it is so after that you bind the params what params are you expecting you're expecting four string values with an integer value 
the string value is for title, date, time, tax, while the integer is the ID. So that's why you have the SSSSI for integer, string and integer. So you pass the result. Now, if the result is okay, you return a true. If not, you return a false. So that's the response that we are listening to that. If it's true, uh, that's an error false. So if it's false, that's an error true. So that's just it. So you could see how the flow is. You could see how we've been able to manipulate the database and update that particular record. So let's see how we're going to consume this uh, in our Android code. The whole structure of this application we've been able to fetch at this point in time. If you're hitting this video for the first time, I will employ you to just take a few steps backwards, get yourself acclimatized with the playlist, start from the user authentication, the register and the login before you move to creating a tax, fetching a tax, now we're in, in updating a tax because I won't be uh, going backwards on that. So you should take yourself backward and get yourself uh, used to that. We have the activity dashboard, which is basically going to fetch all the tags, and you have the floating action button at the bottom right, uh, where you could create a new tag. Now, with the only the the, the, the further integration is to add uh, a listener to the adapter. So, on click of the item in the recycler, we should take you to the add tags. So, the add tags, which actually start up by creating the tags, is going to do two functions. It's going to add the tax and it's going to be able to update that same tax we're going to actually be able to delete as well at that point in time so now we are in update so we hold this this the uh pointer the the entry to the application where we call the tax adapter after you might have fetched all the tax so let's add for that but before i go into the implementation we should know how to uh structure the api so that api will be able to call that uh service that we are looking at which is the update we have the route that, uh, that creates the user, that logs in the user in, that creates the tax, that fetch the tax. Now we are having the update record. You could see that here. So it's going to point at the uh, endpoint, which is the tax update, where, where you could get this here. Over here, the tax update. Well, I think this is in the index PHP. Over here, the tax update. So you are pointing down to the endpoint. We are also we, we now need an ID, which is going to be a path parameters. So we we'll get to look at how we're going to structure that back to Android Studio. Uh, we'll get that in the services package, the user service over here. Cool. Now we're going to call the put verb, the form URL encoded, because we're going to be uh, posting some values as well, uh, which is the date if you if you've updated. So we need to actually fetch, uh, post that to uh, the firm, and we use the put verb to update. We have the update record, which is the uh, endpoint that I showed earlier, and the path params, which is the ID. You can see that right there. So we should see where we've been able to set up the path, which is the ID and integer variable that we're expecting. And we have the fields, the title, the date, the time, and the tax so you could see that and expecting the message pojo just a your message was it done successfully or not so that's the essence of this callback over here so let's get to move further we'll be looking at the adapter since we're going to be testing out our own click listener to the adapter and where we're going to do that we're going to do that in the view holder over here when you override the on click method after uh, setting up the on click listener on the view. After that, you get the adapter position. You could use the pass label where you're just going to pass in uh, the, the, the object, and from there, you could extract the values to call the pojo. Or you could put some extras that if you really know the amount of extras you are going to, to pass to the next activity. So, for simplicity, I'm going to follow this uh, flow. You pass the title, the date, the time, ID, tax. But is it recommended to create that as a constant, which you have over here, so that you won't be having any mistake? Because when you start to click uh, passing the string values, you could uh, start having typographical errors. So with that, you're good to go. And you pass in the appropriate title from the pojo. 
so you trigger the uh, the intent to call to, to push those values to the add tax activity so it's going to start the activity on click of each item of the recycler view add them straight down to the add, add tax activity over there so that's where the old stuff is going to be done where you're going to update and at the same time uh, submit a record now for updates, how are you going to get the, the structure of the updates? How are you going to be so sure that we are in the update scenario? You're going to do that by adding some few uh, things. You have to get the intent that started this activity, calling this intent that started this activity with the get intent to test for an extra. Does this intent as this particular extra type title? It could be the date, it could be the time. Since we are passing those extras. Uh, so you just pick one of it does this intent contain this extra so if it does you have the value right there so you could extract those values and uh, extract the, the title the date the time save it as a global variable so that you could access it anywhere in the uh, in the in the class so you have that set up and uh, you, you pass in there the tax title as the value of the tax title since uh, you're just pushing from the adapter to the uh, add tax class the same thing goes with the description and the update tax uh, you you will set a pointer this we're going to be using this pointer to be to be so sure that you are in the update uh, scene or not so there's an update tax boolean which will be set to true at this point in time because you are updating you set the title of the submit button it's not gonna be okay if you are having save let it depict what you're doing update and uh, you could even set uh if that's the title you could even set the toolbar to update record so you could go further to do that now else if uh you are not having that intent you, the intent doesn't listen uh, doesn't have the extra so you should know that that's going to be a new record that's the else statement so you're still going to get the same flow that we had calling the present calendar uh, that's the present date and time so that's going to show that you are actually handling a new record the same thing is applicable to when you are clicking on the set time uh, interface that's for the uh, for the time picker or the time set dialog uh, the time picker dialog now if the update tag since we have a boolean that listens uh, anytime the intent is being passed so it's going to be true if not it's going to be false so if the boolean is true you should know that you are trying to uh to update right there so let's get to look at it closely we set the boolean to be true if you are updating now if the boolean is true what are you going to do you're going to call the uh time picker the new instance you pass the hour of day and you set it appropriate appropriately and now if they put if it's not if it's else you're going to pick the time text uh you get the text you convert to string and uh you're going to convert 24 hours i think i've covered this earlier and you split the time that's if the boolean is false this should be if the boolean is false and this should be if it's true so that's how it should flow. Sorry for that, because we've covered this. It's going to actually pick the uh, the 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 present calendar date and time. Now, if it's true, which is what we are talking about now, it's going to get the time text because it's just going to be in a string format. So you need to capture that. It's going to take a snapshot of that, pass that to the present time, which is a string. Now you need to do some conversion to this. Which is the word convert to 24 hours let's get to see where this method is being called it's a tactic method which you can uh make reference to from anywhere in the uh, application so this is what it does it takes the time string and throws a pause exception a pause exception we're going to undo this exception in any calling activity so anywhere that has been that assess this method needs to undo this exception because you just throw it it's not really uh, handling it in this method in this class which is the convert class so what is basically it's going to convert 
get the date format and pass the the time so it's going to pass the time to the date format so it's going to take the string format pass it to the date format and there is going to uh convert it which is uh if you should say the date format is an hour minute and the uh which is either the pm and the am so that's the format because it's time now now it's going to convert it back to just hour and minutes which is in the format update so you could see how the conversion uh, goes so after that go back to the tax we have the converted value over here so that we could be able to split it now it's going to be 24 hours it's not going to be uh, in 12 hours where you'll be having uh, the p.m. and the a.m. that's just what this is doing so we're going to actually split the value we have because we have uh, the uh, this side so with that means we're going to have the left and the right before the colon now anyone in the right is going to be the first index which is zero the one that follows the colon is going to be the second index which is one so it's going to be hour and minute so we've been able to split that and pass that into another variable you can see that right there so with that set that to the time picker dialog so that the time is the, the picker is going to be exactly what uh, the value of the time is so that it's right if you're trying to set the, 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 the clock to the real time that uh, the the tax is not just the, the random time so it's going to be the real time so you could be able to easily adjust the time so you, that's just that's that's a very good user experience uh, uh, process so it's good to stick with this now you have the pass int you are now converting the string to int uh to be able to to be usable with the time picker dialog cool the same thing goes with date now it's going to be if this is false if it's false because we are setting a boolean true uh when you are updating a new record so if now it's true uh you need to also call on the uh, are we calling on anything get the present date a string and uh, we also need to split based on the slash which is the forward slash because of the date you're going to split that so now what we're going to split it will be splitting today month and year with the index 0 1 and 2 after that you have the aggregate month the aggregate month is when we pass uh, the the month we're trying to convert the month value to string to, to integer because it's, act, it's uh, coming as a string value and there's something I really want to show you when you're setting uh, the month in Java uh, you need to add or you need to delete uh, sometimes you need to add plus plus but this time we need to delete uh, minus one from it so that we're going to have it set correctly so that's just the essence of this the minus minus before we now uh, pass that to the date speaker dialog the same thing goes for the pass int for the uh, year and we have for the day so we set that back to the date speaker so the date speaker will be accurate with uh, the value is going to present when you're trying to update it's going to present the the, the the present tax date so that you could easily update from there not that it's going to start all over again you could get the gimmick uh, now you have the time set and uh, you have the date set all still in that now at the point of submission uh, we're going to update now we're not creating a new record so what are we going to do when we're updating now if the update is false just like what we are looking right there if the if the update is true rather that was first of over here so if it's true you're going to call on the update tax that's in the submit tax because that's the boolean that pointer boolean is very important it will make you know the present state of this uh, uh flow is it an update or is it a new record you're having now if the up boolean is true since we set the update tax to be true anytime you are updating uh you, you pass the title the date the ta time the description and the tax id uh, which uh, you actually got right from the intent because we've, we've been able to put the extra of the ID 
to the intent and pass that to the abstract uh, class. Now you uh, just do the same call where you override on response and on failure so you could actually get the right message which is the response message over here uh, when the response body is not equals to null so you speed that to the user else if it is false you know this is a new record we've covered that earlier on this is just an adjustment to the fetch of uh, of the of, of the data or the creation of the tax so cool we could cover that as well so that's just the basic flow of when to update the bits uh, update we read the record you're doing that the same time the same process in an activity but you should know when to do each of the tasks if it's to update this point in time or if it's to add when you add it is when you click on the floating action button when you're updating is when you click on the particular item to update so that's just it so cool i'll be showing uh the flow so that we'll be able to see how these are uh, how this move and uh i'll be actually let's get to see let's get to have a feel of of how it is we're going to update a particular record and uh we'll get to do that the essence of using them in later is because i'm actually uh, doing a local host and it's not it's, everything is running on my machine my server my backend server is running on my machine uh my the, the android source 2 is also running on the machine so we'll actually exercise a little patience uh, so this is going to boot up and we're going to run this application on the android um, later we're going to test this with uh, what we have on the server so if we the main time let's get to look at the ph my admin i hope you are familiar with uh, this uh, this interface uh, we're going to look at the users because we need we might need to log in uh, we're still going to need to uh, undo that where you have a persistent user login so the user will have to continually log in every time the app closes we'll get to look at that uh, probably after uh, this update so we have the users we have some users are right there we have the user name Adege. We'll get to look at Adege and I uh, hope we have some tags for Adege. We should we'll get to look okay. We have two tags for Adege and we'll get to update uh, Adege record. So that's up. Let me launch that to the emulator. We'll get that read it. So let's uh, exercise patients to get that uploaded to the emulator uh, in the meantime I will employ you to click on the like button uh, please like my videos share them uh, let it grow let someone give someone that really needs to learn Android programming it's quite fun it's good to learn together so we'll move together and we're gonna win together so share the videos and uh, subscribe to the channel I recommend it to you uh, your friends your relatives your neighbors your friends at school at work uh, your colleagues let them have a feel of, of this uh, mind-blowing experience all right um, now we have the emulator uh, set up so we're going to actually log in let's log in with Adege Adege password adege so login cool and uh, we have these two records let's get to update this Timothy firstly let's give it say uh, training training cool the tax date can you see that it speaks the same date October 21 2018 let's let's cancel that and see if you can see 21 October 2018 because we've been able to set the right date to the date uh pick a dialog so let's try to maneuver extend it to a friday okay can you see that 
and the time 11 20 a.m same thing we are having right there 11 20 a.m so now let's uh give it to 1 p.m 1 20 p.m cool okay uh let's change this reading and so we said Lenin Android Lenin Consuming API. Let's put it away. Consuming API. record record updated can you see that so let's get to look at that over here we have reading and dancing before a day same date so let's browse to see the updated record could you see that training as a title tax leading and con consuming api the time 1 20 pm the date 2016 2018 cool so that's just a basic way to update your record update the tax record any record whatsoever using uh, the cloud service using web APIs uh, consuming user retrofit and uh, basically with a slim framework that helps us to uh, save that to the MySQL database so thank you guys for hanging out with me throughout this video uh, we'll be doing one more aspect uh, which is uh, to delete the record and uh, create a persistent login uh, for user experience for good user experience so that's cool so uh, with that uh, you should be uh, equipped with a full structure of how to interact with uh, a web service API with a cloud service and create one not just interacting alone being able to create your own uh, web API so thank you one more time and uh, don't forget to subscribe to the Lara Studios. Uh, do have a pleasant time. Bye bye.